Welcome, friends of alchemy, are ready to help me find the best potion in Hogwarts and crown the champion house. To start the competition, we'll see Gryffindor and Hufflepuff, each with a cocktail that embodies their founders and their values, traits and elements of their respective houses and their students. In Gryffindor, courage reigns supreme, like the blazing fire that fuels their spirits. Hufflepuff, on the other hand, stands firm like the earth, embodying loyalty and kindness. And you're not going to be just observing students. You'll have a say in who wins by voting for your favorite house cocktail here on YouTube and on Patreon, where each vote is worth 10 points. I'll also send this exact Hufflepuff cup to one lucky patron, regardless of which house wins. So don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell icon if you haven't already, and become a patron member to see how the magic is created behind the scenes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go pick up some supplies on Diagon Alley. Magical cocktail time. As you can see, I'll be starting this duel of houses with the Gryffindor potion, because the Gryffindor's fiery spirit represented by a lion mascot, their scarlet and gold colors, and their bravery. My starting point was the cocktail with strong flavors that the muggles call the penicillin, with spicy ginger, honey, and a smoky float on top. So here's what we mix together to make Godric's elixir. The base will be something the spirit purebloods might call a mudblood whiskey. It's aged for only 9 days, using acceleration techniques. But as many Gryffindors have shown, it's the boldness on the inside that matters. And Arbate will give us enough flavor and smokiness we expect in this potion. Instead of honey ginger syrup, I'll use a combination of homemade ginger liqueur for the fiery kick, and cinnamon syrup with beetroot for the scarlet color. Lemon super juice and saline solution are almost magic ingredients as well. Here they'll balance the sweetness and boost the flavors. And for a bold, flashy finish, candied ginger with a little true magic. I don't want to make this episode too long, and I also have another cocktail idea for this ginger liqueur, so I'll keep its recipe hidden in the restricted section of the library. But there are commercially available options out there, not only on Diagon Alley, that are perfectly fine. As with the cinnamon and beetroot syrup, let's get our sous vide cauldron and make it now. You'll only need water, sugar, saline cinnamon, and beetroot powder for the end. Start by combining 150 grams of water and 150 grams of sugar in a sous vide bag. To that I'll add 3 grams of crushed saline cinnamon. This variety is also safer to use than the hard bark cassia cinnamon, so get the right stuff. Crush it with a mortar and pestle and add it to the bag. Beetroot would lose the color with the heat, so we'll add it later. Now let's double seal the bag with a vacuum sealer and maybe a little magic, just to be safe. Then place it in our cauldron. Make sure it's not leaky and have it cook for 1 hour at 88 degrees Celsius or 190 degrees Fahrenheit. With a little magic of editing, we are done. And when the syrup is cooled, cut open the bag. Let's drain it through a cloth filter to keep out all the cinnamon particles. Now it's time to turn it red. And instead of blood of the enemy forcibly taken, I'll mix in 2 grams of beetroot powder. I'll add the link below. But if you still want to mimic blood, you can use pure beetroot juice as well. Once it's nicely mixed, transfer it to a bottle and don't forget to add the label, so don't mix this up with salamander blood. With that we are ready to make Godric's elixir, which will make you be of good courage. This will be a shaking potion, so grab a shaker and chill it. While a low tumbler glass is ready and waiting in the freezing dungeon, start with 1 and 3 quarters of an ounce or 52 and a half mils of Etoch Arbate Pure Malt. As an alternative, find a medium pitted scotch. Next, 3 quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half mils of ginger liqueur. Send an all down to the comments to let me know if you'd like to see this DIY recipe. Next, the same amount, 3 quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half mils of our scarlet red cinnamon beetroot syrup. And again, 3 quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half mils, this time lemon super juice, to make this a sour style concoction. And the secret ingredient that brings out the best in every cocktail, 2 drops of saline solution. This is just salt mixed with water. Now we'll add our cocktail to the ice and give it a good hard shake to chill, dilute and aerate the drink. Using the AQ spell, summon the chilled glass from the freezer. Add a tempered ice cube and double strain the cocktail over it. And for the final touch, we'll represent the fire that burns in the heart of a lion, a candy ginger wrapped in a food grade pyro paper. With a flick of a wand, you get fire. And the cocktail is ready. Now for all the brave at heart, Let's take a sip and move on with the cocktail for those just and loyal. Those patient Hufflepuffs. Velvet red syrup made a pinkish cocktail, but the orange ginger brings the Gryffindor look. It has a nice burnt smoky aroma which leads into a rich, full-bodied and balanced cocktail, with a spicy ginger and cinnamon being in the front, but not overpowering this easy-to-drink elixir. 
but let's now give the floor to humble and hardworking Hufflepuffs, represented by the Badger mascot. They're known for their loyalty, kindness and patience. Their element is Earth, so it's fitting that the head of their house is a professor of herbology. So to honor that, I was looking to make a herbal, earthy cocktail, and something that would be perfect to serve in this. Helga Hufflepuff's cup. I've been lucky enough to be given this cup from a cloaked stranger at the Hawk's Head. That has never turned out bad, right? If you'd like to have it in your collection, I found a replica of this and I'll link it below, but it will have a small hole in it, probably from where the Horcrux was. So I wouldn't suggest you use it for drinking. But here's what's I'll use to make a potion I'm of course calling Helga's Cup. For that solid, subtly grassy base, I'm going with Blanco Tequila. Representing patience, since it requires years for agave to grow large enough before it's harvested by hardworking Himadors. The herbal heart of this cocktail will be Green Chartreuse, created by monks from the Carthusian order that's almost as old as Hogwarts itself. And wild mandrakes are growing to full maturity, Professor Sprout created a clear basil cordial for the citrus, sweetness and additional herbal notes in the cocktail. Saline solution is again a key ingredient, but here the finishing touch will be a mushroom perfume, made with porcini or penny bun mushrooms, picked from the forbidden forest of course. I think Professor Sprout actually used the same recipe as I did when making the zero waste gin basil smash, so check that out for the instructions on how to make the basil cordial, just make sure you label it carefully, so don't mix up basil cordial and basilisk venom. But I think it's time for everyone to learn how to make porcini perfume. Of course make sure not to wander too far into the forbidden forest, especially not at night and that you've studied the 1000 magical herbs and fungi from cover to cover. Once you've found the perfect edible mushroom, deherbate it and you'll be able to use it throughout the year. I'll take 1.2 gram of deherbated porcini and mix it with 1 ounce or 30 ml of 40% vodka. You could use another spirit as well, but I think the mushroom will give us enough complexity and flavor. You should leave this to infuse for 6 days. Or if you have the elder wand, try tapping it 6 times and that might just have the same effect. Once this is done, strain the infused porcini vodka into a spray bottle. Now we can mix the potion that will best suit those that do what is nice. Let's make Helga's cup. This time I'll first add ice to the cup itself, to chill it like this, before we move on to the shaker. Remove the ice, then I'm again starting with the base. This time it's 2 ounces or 60 ml of Mejenta Blanco tequila. No additives are added to this tequila, making it as pure as the heart of a Hufflepuff. Next, quarter of an ounce or 7.5 ml of green chartreuse, which at 110 proof or 55% ABV will be enough to give its distinct herbal character. And let's not forget my or Professor Sprout's basil cordial, one and a quarter of an ounce or 37.5 ml, herbal, sweet, sour and clear. To boost the flavors in the cocktail, let's add 4 drops of saline solution. Optionally substitute this with Felix Felicis, when you need a little extra luck on your side. Now let's add ice and give the cocktail a good hard shake. Remove the ice from the cup and double strain the cocktail. Same as before, but this time into the cup of Helga Hufflepuff. For garnish, let's add a single basil leaf. Then spray the whole cocktail with a few sprays of mushroom perfume. I could see Helga drinking this during a Yule Ball. It's pleasantly earthy and umami on the aroma, with a fresh basil complementing the body provided by the Blanco tequila and the herbal chartreux. A wonderful spring herbal cocktail that is very enjoyable, like you'd expect from the company of a Hufflepuff. With that, we've made it to the bottom of the cup of this first duel of houses. Post a lion or badger emoji to tell me which one is your favorite. But remember, to vote officially, you'll have to participate in a poll either on Patreon or the YouTube community post. I'd give my vote to Hufflepuff. But that's just one vote. Let's see who will go on to duel against the winner of Slytherin vs Ravenclaw. Before that, I'll see you with a classic cocktail time episode. To make your wait easier, check out how to make real-life butterbeer. Cheers, witches and wizards.